So I wanted to be a Be Well Collective mentor because I am a big sister and I love to help people and support people. Growing up with my mum and dad in the spotlight, it, for me it didn't feel different to anyone else because I didn't know anything different up until maybe I was about nine, uh, somewhere around there. Up until then it was normal, it was just we went and saw loud shows sometimes and with rooms with lots of people and I spent summers travelling on, on photo sets and sitting underneath the hair and makeup table and for me that was normal. Um, and then when I got a bit older, I kind I figured out that actually this is not how everyone else spends their time or their holidays or, you know, it's the, the crazy travelling and... I think for me the most challenging parts of modelling were walking up on set and being a slightly different shape to everyone else and turning up and even though my agent had given my measurements, they're still not being clothes that fit, um, particularly when it's a shoot just you there, not with other girls. And you kind of walk in and you go, wait, you knew what size I was when, I, when, I, when you booked me and I know that my agent sent the stylist all of the measurements and, and still it, it's, it became quite demoralizing at one point and, and I had to learn that to make stuff work that didn't fit and that's a talent in itself to make clothes look good when no one knows but it's like duct taped to you at the back or <laughs> you've got slits in the jeans to get them on. Um, but that, that was quite tough. I think that was probably the toughest part. The industry is getting better. It's becoming more, more diverse, maybe more tolerant. Um, you know, people are learning to shoot different shapes and different sizes and, and, and making it beautiful, and which is the important thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, making it so that the person looking at the image or video goes, well, I see me there, and they look gorgeous and, and that makes me feel good about myself, which I think is important. I have huge imposter syndrome even now. Even knowing, you know, saying that it feels right, I could, I'll turn up on set oh, in the first half an hour, I will be looking around going, I'm not really meant to be here, am I? Um, it, yeah, it's still, imposter syndrome still happens now. Uh, every single time I'm on set, every single time I'm doing an interview every single time I'm doing anything. Um, the, the little voice in my head can be very loud and it's very difficult to sometimes rein it in and keep it under control. Um, but I'm naturally quite a positive, happy person, um, which helps, it really, really does help because even I, though I have that little voice, I will still be happy on the outside and it's almost like doing a crazy grin if you're feeling sad and after about a minute of crazy grinning your body releases stuff that makes you feel happy anyway. Fear plays a huge part in my life. I live with a constant state of fear and anxiety uh, like my resting levels are kind of midway which is not very good. I try not to let it stop me from doing things. Um, I mean when the real fear kicks in amazingly I have mind blanks so I used to get crazy fear whenever I would walk in a, in a fashion show. And it'd be just before I went out and I'd walk and, I'd, and then the next thing I remember is walking back in. And I don't actually remember being on a runway at all because um, I, I must have been so nervous that my brain blanked it out. <laughs> so someone said, you know, I keep always get asked, what do you do on a runway, how do you do it? And I go, I, I don't know, I actually don't know. <laughs> So for me, anxiety is a big deal. I get terrible panic attacks, which actually you've witnessed. So you've been there for one of my panic attacks, Sarah, and have had to squish me. <laughs> so I was at a, an event, it was an Amanda Wakeley store event, loads of people there, and suddenly I felt constricted. Uh, like my chest felt like it wasn't really working and I could feel it just under my ears. and. And it was, I knew that it was a panic attack that was coming. And I remember saying to you, I think I'm about to have a panic attack. Can you help me stop it before it gets really bad? And we went upstairs and you and another friend, hum, you had to, I remember telling you, like, you need to crush me, but not like rub me. So I need you to just kind of squeeze me really tight. Um, 
but not not affectionate because then it's over sensory for me. Um, so yeah, I get panic attacks a lot, and that I think that was one of the first times I had had it out at an at an event. But it was actually for me, it was actually a really important lesson is that you know even out if you're with people, and if you particularly if you're prone to panic attacks, letting people know how best to handle it. So letting your friends know how best to handle it so that you don't then feel so embarrassed because the embarrassment makes the panic attack worse. I absolutely think it would have been helpful to have something like Be Well when I was younger. Being told, listen, if you have anxiety or if you don't know what you're feeling, feeling something, you want to go figure out what it is, you can go here and look and find out and teach yourself and connect with a group of people who can help, who can help you understand what it is you're feeling, what you're going through, and then help to support you. And if you found any of this helpful, please donate and support the Be Well Collective because it is a non-profit charity and we rely on you. And it's really helpful for everyone. <laughs>